this membrane which i have shown here is the outer membrane and this is a phospholipid bilayer membrane <coughs> right the outer membrane then this blue color if you can see here this is the inner membrane inner membrane right so first important thing while explaining the structure of mitochondria we should know that mitochondria is composed of double membrane double membrane bounded organelle mitochondria is composed of double membrane right bounded bounded mean it is surrounded by two membranes right which one number one outer and number two inner it's so simple right look carefully what about outer and um, inner membrane the outer membrane is permeable to many substances it is permeable to lots of substances right look carefully friends here if i i have taken a little piece i have taken this area for example I have taken this area look this area contains the outer membrane and the part of inner membrane also and I have enlarged that small part here right and you can see this will be the outer membrane so let me mention it here this is the outer membrane and this will be the inner membrane the inner crest we will see that in a while right so this is the part of outer membrane and this is the part of inner membrane right so you can see here the inner membrane contains lots of proteins but the outer membrane has very less amount of proteins right so we say it is more permeable to different substances which enter the mitochondria but the inner membrane is semi permeable not permeable the inner membrane is semi permeable it does not allow everything to enter the mitochondrial matrix so it allows only those substances which are choiced by the matrix those substances can enter but not everything can enter there but about the outer membrane everything can has an entry to it right so we say outer membrane is permeable inner membrane is semi permeable outer membrane contains less proteins it contains less proteins but inner membrane contains as you can see here more proteins <laughs> more proteins right so this is about the, the differences between the inner membrane and outer membrane other thing about the inner membrane is that the inner membrane look here this blue color shows the inner membrane so the inner membrane at certain points make invagination right finger like invaginations and these invaginations are called the cresti you can see here look this is the invagination the inner membrane has gone in towards the inside and has came back so here's a little bit space and this space is called the cresti right so the inner membrane has cresti right okay done with it then we will move further forward and see the composition of the <clears throat> mitochondria that what is its composition what forms the mitochondria this was a little bit about the structure and other than this if you talk about the structure of mitochondria there is outer membrane there is inner membrane there are cresti and let me write this cresti separately here number 3 cresti right and what is cresti the invagination of the inner membrane will make finger like invaginations and these finger like uh, areas which are formed by this inner membrane these are called the crest right and inside this crest there are certain substances we will see them later number 4 <coughs> about structure of mitochondria 
right there is a space in between the inner and outer membrane right this is your inner membrane this is your outer membrane and in between the inner and outer membrane there is a little bit space right and this space is called the perimembranous space right you can see here this is called the <coughs> perimembranous space so number four we will write here there is perimembranous space and this space is filled of hydrogen ions and other enzymes which are required for the respiration you can see here respiratory enzymes are present here so this area contains lots and lots of protons right so this area is filled with protons done so there is perimembranous space right and uh, if you talk about the chambers of mitochondria chambers right so mitochondria has two chambers right the first chamber is the perimembranous space and the second chamber is the inner mitochondrial matrix area right so there are two chambers of mitochondria this this chamber which is called the perimembranous space right and this large chamber which contains the matrix so there is uh, the outer chamber and number two there is the inner chamber right so the inner chamber is filled with matrix done this is a little bit the structure of about the structure of mitochondria now let's see about the composition of mitochondria what is the composition of mitochondria mitochondria is composed of what mitochondria is composed of lots of things but among them we should know that we should know that this mitochondria is composed of it has dna in it right you can see here it has dna right number two mitochondria must contain if it contains dna it must contain rna right so it it has rna we know that then third important thing mitochondria contains ribosomes ribosomes right so it has lots of ribosomes inside it and attached in this uh, inner membrane right so it contains DNA, it contains RNA, it contains ribosomes, it contains matrix, right? And this matrix compo is composed of many important ions and other uh, minerals it contains and it contains water also, right? It contains lots of water with its composition. Then if it must contain if it contains rna ribosome then it must contain some proteins right so mitochondria contains lots of proteins right which are floating inside this matrix which are bounded to the inner membrane and the outer membrane right it must contain lots of proteins and then we say that mitochondria is composed of uh, it contains uh, complexes right it contains complexes and those complexes which help in the respiration so you can see here this is complex number one for example we have shown the diagram this is complex number two this is complex number three and this is complex number four so it contains lots of complexes and these complexes are made up of proteins right so we say there are four types of complexes inside our mito Chondria, right? Okay, so these complexes are the parts of the mitochondria. We should not forget them, right? And number eight, the mitochondria also has some oxisomes. And what are these oxisomes? These oxisomes are also called the F1 particles, right? We also call them F1. F1 particles and let me show you these F1 particles you can see these red blue and green part 
look this molecule this molecule this molecule this molecule the inner membrane of the mitochondria contains all these f1 molecules f1 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 particles right and these f1 particles if i draw him here draw them here like this this f1 particle itself is composed of three important points three important parts the first this is the head right the second one look if that i have drawn in green color there this is the stalk right so this is its stalk and then there is the third the green part and this green part is the base of it right so this is the base this whole molecule is called the f1 particle right so it contains this mitochondria and its composition it contains its these f1 particles right and these f1 particles are responsible they are they help in cellular respiration right and also these complexes help in cellular respiration right and they have very important role in electron transport chain i will write here electron transport chain e t c they help there right okay friends then what is the composition of the mitochondrial matrix let me write it here the matrix it contains so this mitochondria <coughs> look here inside to the inner membrane there is the jelly like substance and the jelly like substance is called the matrix so let me write here jelly like substance present inside the mitochondria and this gel like substance is called the uh, matrix of the mitochondria and this matrix contains what this matrix contains look the dna is present there so it contains dna number 2 it contains it must contain rna number 3 it must contain certain proteins right it must contain the ribosomes ribosomes it must contain the some minerals right it as mitochondria is responsible to 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 keep the maintenance of the calcium so it must contain minerals and number 6 this mitochondrial matrix also has water in it right so this is the composition of the mitochondrial matrix right now let's move towards the biogenesis of mitochondria biogenesis biogenesis means that this mitochondria can reproduce itself how does it reproduce look carefully if here is a mitochondria right okay and this mitochondria needs uh, to be doubled or we say that if there are certain cells which contain these number of mitochondria how these mitochondria come from from where does these mitochondria come they reproduce their self right mitochondria self biogenized how they reproduce as binary fashion right so what do they do first of all there may there is made an elongation look here like this right look here is its inner membrane now you can see we have met two mitochondria from this one mitochondria now they will detach it here and they will make two mitochondria so we know that mitochondria can reproduce mitochondria can make copies of their cells as they contain dna so there must be certain genes which upon activation will cause the splitting of mitochondria into two so mitochondria can be reproduced mitochondria reproduce yourself right done
<clears throat> this is about the structure and functions of mitochondria as you can see here friends the inner membrane contains lots of complexes lots of f1 molecules and all of these molecules are responsible for cellular respiration and uh, we will have a separate lecture on all these complexes in a lecture regarding the electron transport chain we will discuss it inshallah at some time right done what is the functions of mitochondria functions of mitochondria so look friends the first and the most important thing you know that we have written here that mitochondria are the power generators of the cells so they provide energy provide energy to cell in the form of ATP mitochondria provide energy to the cell then the next function of mitochondria is thermogenesis thermogenesis therm means heat right genesis means production so mitochondria produce heat in different cells in our body for example <coughs> in brown fats look carefully in brown fats in the mitochondria of brown fats There are certain enzymes which are called the thermogenin enzymes. In the inner membrane, there are certain enzymes which are called the thermogenin enzyme. And this thermogenin enzyme is responsible to produce heat in the body of certain animals like amphibians, like ourselves, not in me but in a small baby during very cool that small baby will not feel any coolness how because in their body there is brown fat in the body of babies right there are brown fats and those brown fats contain mitochondria and those mitochondria contain thermogenin enzyme and these enzymes are responsible for production of heat that's why small babies don't feel any coolness why because in their body they contain heat productors right so mitochondria helps in thermogenesis in our liver cells mitochondria have certain enzymes which help in detoxification of different substances so mitochondria helps in detoxification detoxification is the function of these mitochondria right in certain cells like in our hepatocytes or liver cells okay and then mitochondria also help in fat metabolism these are the some functions of mitochondria friends okay dear friends this was about mitochondria the first organelle that we discussed for you guys and i hope you like the lectures and my friends if you like these lectures please invite your friends to the channel and do comments to me that yes we have learned about mitochondria many things so see you in the next lecture we will discuss another organelle till then allah hafiz